plus mother. Unbelievable. Mother. Hajim Those people were different. She would breastfeed him and she would eat from that dates and drink from that water until she ran out of dates and ran out of water and ran out of milk. Now Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam is crying and weeping. Ismail alayhi salam was curling on himself because of the hunger and he was hitting the ground with his feet and he was crying as if he was dying. At that moment Hajar could not sit down any further. Even there is no word to go but she couldn't handle seeing her child dying in front of her eyes. So she went on top of a mountain that was close to her. She climbed that mountain and that mountain is Asafa. She looks from the top of the mountain if she can see anyone. She saw no one. Walked down the mountain and she ran through the valley and then she climbed another mountain. The name of that mountain is Al Marwa. And she go to the top of the mountain looking around if she can see anyone. She saw no one. And she walked down the mountain, panic, ran through the valley, climbed down as Safa again. So she goes to the mountain of Marwa, the mountain of Safa, the mountain of Marwa. The ma she goes back and forth seven times. And these very days, the pilgrims, three million of them, will commemorate that walk that she gave between Safa and Marwa, back and forth, back and forth. Subhanallah, Sayyidatina Hajar at that moment was afraid, had fear in her heart. She was running with worry. If she knew what will happen, she would be climbing those mountains with big smile on her face. If she knew that the nations of the world, millions and millions of them are going to follow her tracks and follow her sunnah and follow her way, she would be making that trip with a big smile on her face. When she got on top of Al Marwa, that's the end of seventh climbing, she heard a voice. So she said, quiet, who is she speaking to? She is speaking to herself out of confusion. She is telling herself, be quiet. And then she is trying to listen. She heard a voice again and she addresses the voice. I beg you, reveal yourself if you can help me. I beg you, help me. She saw an angel, leader of the angels, Jibreel alayhi salam, descended specially to that spot where Ismail alayhi salam is laying down. And the angel started picking up the dirt with his wing or with his foot until water started flowing from the ground. A spring of water gushing from nowhere. She looked at it and she thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she wanted to gather the water. So she created a basin like structure with her hands with the muddy sand and she began to say in the language Zam, Zam. Zam, ah, Zam, it means stop, that's how this stop, came about. stop, because we want to now take you and drink you. And this of course differs a lot from Christianity. We don't have Zamzam water in Christianity. So you wow. stop. To this day we have this water known as Zamzam from the same well. Wow. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, If Hajar would have left it alone, it would have been a flowing river. To this day, we cannot explain how so much water is coming for the city of Mecca. How millions of pilgrims throughout the year come and the water never finishes. The water never finishes. It is an unceasing well of water that has lasted for the last 4,000 years in the, in the city of Mecca. Sayyidina Hajar has water, but she doesn't have food. She doesn't have company. So she still needs the social needs and the psychological needs. And when water exists in a place, life starts. So animals start to come around and everything starts to revolve around it. And at that time, there was a big civilization taking place in Yemen. And the people of Yemen had a great flood. So they migrated to Yemen and they were looking for another place to live in. And when someone wants to live in a place, the first thing they want to see is, is the water around. So while well, there was a tribe by the name of Jurhum. And Jurhum is one of those Arab tribes. They were traveling through the Arabian Peninsula. They saw in the sky birds hovering. Birds in the desert means water. They said, we know that there is no water over there. So what are these birds doing? So they sent one or two men to go and investigate. So the men went rushing. They came back with the good news. 
that there is water in the middle of the desert they were very very amazed they came they knew this is a miracle so they asked the woman would you allow us to camp here these are a group of men fighters in the middle of the desert taking permission from a woman and her child <laughs> if they wanted they could have eliminated her with a move of a hand with a strike of a sword but they were very noble and they got a strange answer she said yes but you have no rights in the water the water belongs to us we'll allow you to drink from it really? but it's our property not yours so you can drink and benefit ah, okay but i was wondering allah it is not yours to this day zamzam is not sold to this day belongs to us all oh, wow. we can drink from it see there is an answer zamzam for everything is for in islam of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam everything but they accepted they say yes we agreed and that is how jurhum came to stay in that area and that is the beginning of the settlement and then they lived there and civilization started to take place in mecca and life started to take place in mecca ismail alayhi salam grew That's up all started, among man. these people and as the child grew they That's taught him so arabic wild. they were pure arabs and this is why we can never question allah he is the best of planners after all at first glance it seems strange ibrahim has to leave then his son is starving the wife is alone what is this for but ultimately you see that all of this had to happen so civilization started in mecca as he grew That's up crazy, man. his father used to come and go his father ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam when he came back at one stage he'd seen mashallah this is the setup and he was quite happy with it and he used to come and he used to go he would love him he would kiss him embrace him play with him he would do as a normal father does with his child every day this child is growing and growing and this bond is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger and now he becomes a young the dollar said he starts to help his father he is running around he is helping his father ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam he sees a dream and the dreams of the anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam are true they are revelation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does he see he sees that he is sacrificing he is slaughtering his son allah akbar it was a test to see who he loved more allah or his son can you imagine at the age of 95 at the age of 95 one son he has he thinks he's about to die in a few years he has no progeny left the amount of love he must have for this child and as soon as he saw this dream look at the level of iman without questioning allah without thinking well without pondering without making mashwara from his wife hajar or any other family member immediately he approaches Sayyidina Ismail and says oh Ismail this is the dream that i saw i saw that i was offering you in sacrifice tell me what is your opinion <laughs> ismail <laughs> alayhi salam tell me what's saying, your opinion man what sort of dad are you man <laughs> <laughs> you left me and my mom back here in the jungle and then <laughs> no, you went want to away. Sacrifice me. <laughs> you didn't give any care in the world about us and now you come back and you telling me you want to slaughter me What sort of dad are you, man? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That wasn't Ismail. Ismail alayhi salam. He's no ordinary child. This wasn't my child or your child. This was Ismail. Sadiq al-wa'ad, Allah says in the Quran. Sadiq al-wa'ad. Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam said, Oh father, do whatever you have been commanded. You will find me from amongst those who are patient. So Ibrahim... He really away. got a pious son after all. And his son followed his father. After all, and so he lays him down, and he raises the axe, he raises the sword, and of course, Shaytan appears in front of him, and Shaytan says, "Have you gone crazy? Have you gone mad? He is your only son. What are you doing? How can you kill him?" And so he pelts him with seven stones, and Shaytan goes away. It's always so seven. It's a reoccurring number. In the same place, so he goes to another place to make sure Shaytan doesn't come back. Once again, Shaytan comes back. Once again, he pelts him with seven stones. 
And once again, he takes him to another place. And those three places, Jamrat al-Kubra, Jamrat al-Sughra, Jamrat al-Wusta, to this day, the very point that Ibrahim alayhi salam tried to sacrifice his son, we commemorate it. The pilgrims commemorate it. They will commemorate it yes, three days in a row. Yes, again, only Islam commemorates it. No other religion. Stone these Think pillars about this, as a symbol that shaitan will never cause me to Why? come between me and the commandments of Allah. And then they come to a big Islam rock. is the only Abrahamic faith. There is no Ismail on it and slaughter him. And subhanAllah, <laughs> look what Ismail told his father at that time. Oh my father, tie me with a belt so I do not shake. Because if I shake, your heart will soften. And at the same time, keep your clothes away from my blood. Because if your clothes are covered with my blood, when you return, if my mother is to see this, it will sudden my mother. My mother will not be able to bear and tolerate. Wow. And when you return home, convey my salam to my mother and remind her of the reward of the Sabirin. This should really remind us of what we are giving up for God. Truly ask yourself that question because I asked myself as well, what am I giving up for God? Becoming Muslim, I started praying five times per day. But is this truly enough? No, this is mandatory for us and the prayer is for us. What are we truly giving up for God? I really want you to ask yourself that question and reflect upon it. Then Ibrahim naturally began to cry. And he said to his son, of how course. helpful you are, my son. Ibrahim is crying. Ismail is crying. The angels in the heaven are crying. And Allah is addressing the angels. Ya malaikati. Oh my angels, look at this servant of mine. Is he now worthy of being the Khalil? Is he now worthy of my friendship or not? And the angels reply in one voice. Oh Allah, if we were in the position and place of Ibrahim, then we would not be able to exercise such patience that Ibrahim has exercised. Yes, as a Initially, human with free will, mind you. He placed him on his back. That's very different. And Ismail alayhi salam said to him, Father, place me so that you don't see my face and compassion hits you and you can't carry out the sacrifice. So he placed him on his forehead, upside down, his face down to the ground. And he placed the knife on his neck. Suddenly, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knife refused to cut. Ah, he, he tried again. Started cutting. And Ismail alayhi salam kept on saying, Harder, Father. Maybe you're not putting enough pressure. Allahu Akbar. And when they were confused in that state, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally says, acknowledging one of the best acknowledgments of great honor. Oh, Ibrahim! You had already fulfilled the vision that you saw. This is enough. Oh Ibrahim, you had submitted and surrendered to Allah. This was a very severe test for you. Allah says in the Quran, we redeem severe test, this sacrifice. The with hardest. A momentous sacrifice. An extraordinary sacrifice. Yeah. Allah the biggest. wa ta'ala sent down from the heavens a shape as an alternative to slaughter that sheep, and not Ismail. A male sheep, a white ram, that had big eyes and huge horns, thick wool, very white in color, full of meat, large shoulders. And he sacrificed his lamb in place of this child. We can't even visualize in our minds just 1% of this sacrifice Zero. that Sayyidina Ibrahim wasalam, made. No. After this We're event good. happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we left salam for Ibrahim in the generations to come. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant Ibrahim salam, peace in every salah. Millions and millions of believers all over the world, throughout generations, five times a day and more, are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant Ibrahim alayhi salam peace. The mother passed away, Hajar, and then Ibrahim alayhi salam would make some visits. Ibrahim alayhi salam is traveling always. So he visited Makkah and he came back to the house of Ismail alayhi salam and he knocked the door. So his wife opened the door. He looked at her and he asked her, how is your condition? Where is your husband and what is he doing? Firstly, she didn't know who he was. 
Secondly, she began to complain. No, he leaves us here. He goes away. And he, we don't really have much. You know, we're struggling. And so on. So Ibrahim a.s. said, Deliver my salams to him. And tell him to change his doorstep. Ismail a.s. came home. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, as if he felt something, subhanallah, he felt that his father was there. And he asked his wife, did anybody visit us? She said, yes, an old man came and he asked about you. And he told me to deliver salam to you and to tell you to change your doorstep. Ismail alayhi salam said, that was my father and he is ordering me to separate from you. You are the doorstep and he divorced her. Now, where was she from? She was from Mecca. She was from the tribe of Jurhum. People of Jurhum, they loved Ismail so much. They married him another wife. After some time, Ibrahim alayhi salam came back. Exactly the same thing. He knocked the door. The door was opened. Ismail was in there. So he asked the same question to the wife. He said, tell me about your living. She said, Alhamdulillah, the best living. And she praised the lifestyle that they are leading. The simple lifestyle that they were leading. She praised it. She was happy and condemned righteous woman. So Ibrahim a.s. want to get more details. He said, what food do you eat? She said, we eat meat. Hmm. What do you drink? Water. That's a healthy diet. That's man. all what they used Very to good. have. Meat and water. Carnival so he diet. made dua for them and said, oh Allah, give them blessing in their food. And then he said, when your what husband comes it? back, deliver my salam to him. And tell him to keep the door step. So Ismail a.s. came back. He said, did anybody visit us? She said, yes, an old man came. And he is delivering you salam. And he is saying, keep your door step. So he said, that was my father telling me to keep you as a wife. You're a good woman. Alhamdulillah. And the angels will come to Ibrahim a.s. one day. Mikael, Jibreel. Some narration says Israfil, other narration says the angel of death. Three angels will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the appearance of human beings. And they'll come to Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was in Palestine. And they say to Ibrahim, Salam, peace be upon you. So Ibrahim alayhi salam responds back, peace be upon you too, people that we don't know. When they came in, he asked his wife, do you know them? No, we don't. Okay. He looks at them and he wanted to serve them something. From the qualities of Ibrahim was that he was generous. Allahu Akbar. You so he so. went back into the house and he asked his wife, is there anything to eat? She says, well, we've got a little bit of meat here. He says, no. <laughs> Vegans hate this episode. Nice fat calf we find at the back there. He slaughtered nice. it Not and enough he meat. ordered his servants <laughs> to cook it and on the spit properly and they brought nice. the whole calf. For how many people? Mashallah. Three people. There were just three of them. Look at how hospitable he was. And he forwards the food to them. And Ibrahim alayhi salam sits down to eat. And he's amazed. You know, these people, they traveled, must be hungry. They're not even interested to eat. So Ibrahim got scared. The angels could have told him before he slaughtered. No? So he started <laughs> eating a little bit in order to try and encourage them. And when he saw that they were, they were sort of putting their hands forward, grabbing the meat, and they were acting like they were eating, the food would not actually enter their mouths. He sensed something amiss. Something was wrong. So immediately he told him, hey, you know what? I'm starting to get a doubt. What, who are you here? You know, what's happening here? So they said, don't fear Ibrahim. We are not human beings. We are angels. Allah sent us with two missions to come to you to give you some news and to go and destroy the people of Lut. Wow. Who was listening? His wife Sarah. When she heard, she started laughing. Laughed in the sense that finally something is being done about the people of Lut. <laughs> and they turned to Finally, her. those degenerates are gone. And we then did we something said to about her, the people of the West. A child. <laughs> Sarah, at that moment, she was 90 years old. And when she was young, she couldn't get children. Now when she's old, she's going to get children. And how old is Ibrahim alayhi salam? Ibrahim at that moment was 120 <laughs> years old. And she still important. <gasps> and she started to touch her face. I'm going to give birth and I'm an old woman. And my husband is even older than me. How would this be possible? 
So she said, this is amazing. Amazing. This is absolutely amazing. They told her, are you amazed from Allah's matter? What's this compared to what Allah can do? You are amazed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's matter? Well, there is another good news for you. Not only that you'll fall pregnant and you'll get Ishaq, you will even live long enough until you see the son of Ishaq Yaqub. The mercy of Allah and his blessing be upon you, O family of Abraham. Surely he is worthy of all praise and full of all glory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immediately when he understood that they are going to destroy the people of Lut, immediately look at this humble, forbearing man. These were from his qualities. His character came out. And immediately he said, Inna fiha Luta. That why are you going there when Lut is there? Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. And the angels responded, Nahnu a'lamu biman fiha. We are more knowledgeable about who's there. So they said, look, O oh Ibrahim, let's not talk about that. You just turn away from that discussion because it is the instruction of Allah that they will be destroyed and that punishment will come and it is not going to be reversed. And it's not his business to it worry about a warning to all of us the people of Lut day. and these angels that Allah has sent to them. But he makes it his business, Allahu Akbar, because of how soft he is and how generous he was and how forbearing he was and how humble he was, La ilaha illallah. Because he's so full of mercy, he begins to argue with the angels, spare them, give them some more time, they might, they might repent. Even though Allah had decreed punishment upon them, Ibrahim's heart was so merciful, so tender. That's exactly what Allah says in the Quran. إِنَّهُ كَانَ أَوَّاهًا He was a person who was a tender-hearted man. So he was reassured that Lut would be saved. And he was reassured that the people who had believed would be saved. And then Good. he had bidded farewell to these particular angels and they left in their own way. And the days went past and then another order comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Ibrahim alayhi salam in a moment, in a time, in an era where no one or hardly anyone was saying la ilaha illallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order Ibrahim alayhi salam there to build a house the Kaaba. that we know by the name of Kaaba in the middle of the valley of Mecca as the symbol of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will go to the valley of Mecca. And he'll see Ismail alayhi salam. And he'll say to Ismail, O oh son, Allah had ordered me an order. So Ismail will say, O oh, oh, oh dad, do what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered you to do. So Ibrahim told Ismail, and would you help me? So Ismail said, yes, I will help you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel that showed Ibrahim alayhi salam. And this literally and figuratively cements the legacy of Ibrahim in Islam. Because to this very day, Muslims pilgrim to Mecca, circle around the Kaaba, the house that Abraham built. Which means with this pilgrimage, Muslims are returning to the origin, back to where it all started. Ibrahim must build Amazing. the Kaaba. And there is narration that says that Ibrahim was instructed by Jibreel on how to build the Kaaba. So Ibrahim alayhi salam was the builder and Jibreel was the architect. And Ismail was the laborer. And they start to build the Kaaba. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will put the foundations of the Kaaba. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will build the Kaaba. And Ismail will put the bricks together, he will collect the rocks and will come to his father and Ibrahim will lay the rocks down. And when there were rocks over rocks, there was no cement or mud, there were just rocks over rocks and Ibrahim alayhi salam continued to build the Kaaba until it was too high for him to go more longer or higher, to go more higher in the building. So he asked his son to get a high rock that he could stand on. And Ismail will bring this rock. And Ibrahim will stand on that rock, barefooted. And from the long standing on that rock, Ibrahim's foot will go deep into that rock. And that rock and that place is where Allah says, 
This is Maqam Ibrahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala miraculously. Let me know in the comment section, guys, do we still have access to this rock? Is there a rock around the Kaaba with footprints on? I don't think so. Specific rock that he was standing on to go slightly higher. And he placed it. Then it would come slightly lower. He would get the, the, uh, the next one. Then it would go slightly higher. He would place it. Then it would come low. They knew that this is Allah. It is the house of Allah. He has shown us one too many times that definitely He's with us. And while they were building, they were making dua. Oh Allah, accept this humble effort of ours. You are the all hearer. You are the all knower. Oh Allah, make us obedient. Oh Allah, make us Muslim. Oh Allah, give us the tawfiq to worship you as you should be worshipped. Oh Allah, take out from my progeny an ummah that will be Muslim. And accept our repentance. You are the one that accepts the repentance. And then he said, oh Allah. It's impressive as well to know that this Kaaba then has been built before there was a synagogue, before there was a church, or even before there was a masjid. Oh Allah, from as among them, God. send them Rasulan, a messenger that will call them to your religion and teach them your book. How many? One Rasul. Because Ibrahim salam, has done so many sacrifices, so that one Rasul should be the mighty Rasul. And that Rasul should be a universal Rasul. And not just a universal Rasul, but Imam al Anbiya wa Rasul. Khatamun Nabiyyin Rahmatulil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam and sent to this Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. He came from the Arabs. But every corner of the Kaaba, four corners, they all look the same. So if you want to start circulating around the Kaaba, where are you going to start from? So Ibrahim told his son Ismail, O oh son, go and find me a rock different from all the rocks that you see to put it in one corner to distinguish the corner that this is the beginning of the Kaaba. After this order to his son, Ismail was so tired from working during the day and night and building the Kaaba. So he told his father, O oh father, I feel a bit lazy, tired. So Ibrahim told him, get up and go and do this. So Ismail got up. An order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his father, he went. After a while, Ismail comes back. And he sees his father carrying this white rock to put it in a corner. But this rock, and rock it was where did white, it come huh? from? In the beginning. It's not a common rock that you could find anywhere, especially in that area. So he told him, oh father... Where did you get this rock, white rock from? He said, I got it from the one that doesn't need you or gets lazy. Jibreel got it from me from the heavens. And that's the rock that we call the black rock. And now it's black. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, it was white and it became black from the sins of people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told Ibrahim, the Kaaba's I don't know why, built. but it makes me sad. They called people to come and visit the Kaaba. So Ibrahim looks around, who's there? Who's gonna come? There's no one around. So he said, Oh Allah, where is my voice gonna reach to? Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam asked Allah, Oh Allah, indeed, I will carry out your command. Oh Allah, but I'm here in Mecca. There's no one that lives in Mecca. Mecca is a barren desert. People live hundreds and hundreds of miles away, thousands of thousands of miles away, in different corners of the globe. Oh Allah, I will make the call, but these people will not be able to hear my call. Oh Allah, who will convey the sound of my voice to these masses? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds, O oh Ibrahim, worry, Mink al adhan wa aliy al balagh Your job is to make the call. My job and responsibility <laughs> exactly. is to convey the sound of your ma voice to the masses, wherever they may be. Subhanallah, now look at it, the message was conveyed. Moreover, this reminds me of a hadith, and I'm paraphrasing here, of course, that Islam will enter every household, which ultimately now is successfully done through the internet. Salam. He climbs Amazing. Mount Abi Qubais and then he faces the north and then he faces the south and then he faces the east and then he faces the west. Every time he makes the call, Oh people, your Lord has made himself a house in Mecca al Makarrama. Come and visit the house of your Lord. Come and perform the Hajj. Come and perform the Umrah. Come and perform the Tawaf. 
Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he made this call, not only did Allah convey the sound of his voice to all those that were living on the dunya, wherever it may be, even though they were living thousands and thousands of miles away from the sacred house and the blessed city of Makkah al Mukarrama, not or did only Allah convey the sound of his voice to every single person on the earth. Allah conveyed the sound of his voice to all those that were in the heaven. Allah conveyed the sound of his voice to those that were not even born, to those that didn't even come, and those that were to come right till the day of judgment. Allah conveyed the sound of his voice to every single one. And when they heard the call and cry of Ibrahim, they began to respond one after the other. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Oh Allah, I am here. Oh Allah, I am here. Oh Allah, I am here. Our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Today people are performing Hajj according to how many times they responded to the call and cry of Ibrahim. And to this day that house is venerated by billions of people around the world. They face it when they pray. To this day, every single year, hundreds of millions of pilgrims perform their Umrah and the Hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Ibrahim, I will make you an Imam, a leader for mankind, someone who will be a role model for everyone to follow. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him, we made all the prophets after him from his descendants. All of the NBA of Allah True. subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Rusul that came after Ibrahim were from the descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The description of Ibrahim yes. alayhi salam's features. And this is why yet again is so extremely outrageous then to have the claim as the Christians do that Jesus came with a different message or that Jesus then reveals that God is three in one. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. We as Muslims know that Allah's pattern is never changing, that Allah is not changing and therefore the message is never changing. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I have seen Jesus the son of Mary and Moses and Abraham. I saw them. He saw them, Allah showed him to them. As for Jesus, alayhi salam, he was red, red-skinned, of curly hair and broad chest. Describes him this way. Red Musa, skin? alayhi salam, was of mean? tanned skin and big body. And he had rough hair. The companions asked, what about Abraham? Ibrahim, alayhi salam. He said, Unzuru ila sahibukum. Look at your man, meaning himself. The closest description for you is to look at me, and that is what Ibrahim alayhi salam looked like. He looked similar to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam what went makes sense? back to Palestine. And Ibrahim alayhi salam lived the rest of his life in Palestine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Ibrahim the suhuf, the chapters. And Ibrahim alayhi salam passed away aged 175 and he was buried by his two sons Ismail and Ishaq in the Khalil in Palestine. And nowadays we think we're going to extend our lifespan by following the science if you know what I mean. Ibrahim sure. salam. Now we move on to Ishaq and Ismail. The older one is Ismail, may peace be upon him. The younger one is Ishaq. Not much has been mentioned in the Quran about both of them besides the story of Ismail alayhi salam prior to him having been granted prophethood by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that, Allah makes mention of very few qualities of him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, make mention of the prophet Ismail in the book. He was very, very truthful to his promise. He used to fulfill his promises and he was sent and he was also granted scriptures. He used to constantly remind his family members to fulfill salah and to purify themselves, giving charity. And he was one whom Allah was pleased with. And Ismail alayhi salam got married from... But why Ismail alayhi salam? Was Ismail a prophet in Islam? I don't know about this, so please let me know in the comment section, guys. Crop of Jurhum. And then descendants and offspring uh, came and took place in... Uh, Valley of Mecca from Ismail alayhi salam and he passed away in Mecca and he was buried in Mecca and from the offspring Quraysh comes and from Quraysh Hashim comes and from Hashim Abdul Muttalib and Abdul Muttalib is the grandfather of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam descendants where does it go back to? It goes back to Ismail. As for Ishaq 
عليه الصلاة والسلام. Isaac lived in Palestine, where his father was, and the lineage of the Jews had a son. His name is Yaqub. Yaqub, his other name is Israel. So this is where Israel comes from. Now he comes from Israel or Yaqub, twelve children. From those twelve children, ten come from one mother, two come from another. Those two come from another it is Yusuf and Benjamin. Those twelve children are the twelve tribes of Bani Israel. Exactly. The children of Israel go back to those twelve children. Now, and Ishaq alayhi salam, he lived in Palestine. He called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa jal took his soul in Khalil. Khalil is the same place as Ibrahim alayhi salam passed away and he was buried in Khalil in Palestine. And remember when we were speaking about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, we mentioned Lut. So Lut is part of the story of Ibrahim but in a different area. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had had a plan for the Prophet Lut alayhi salam. Lut alayhi salam on the way was ordered through inspiration to go to the most corrupt city at that moment. It was by the name of Sadum. صلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليه. Alright, that's it. Finally, we reacted to the Prophet series. This was a long one. The future parts are a bit shorter, so therefore, inshallah, soon we should get to those. Anyways, this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.